On the evening of Tuesday, October 6, 2020, Christie's Auction House sold a highly unusual item, the 40-foot, 12-meter skeleton of the fifth most complete Tyrannosaurus Rex skeleton ever found. Belonging to the individual named Stan, this skeleton came from the Badlands of South Dakota and preserves around 188 bones, providing loads of color to the life of Tyrannosaurus and the ecology of the latest Cretaceous Hell Creek. This 67 million year old fossil went into the auction with an estimated value of 8 million US dollars and skyrocketed to 31.8 million in total in just a few minutes. It's now the most expensive fossil ever sold, beating out the much more complete and more important Sue, who sold for around $8 million in 1997. Unfortunately for many communities involved with science, the winning bidder remains anonymous. If the winning bid for Stan came from neither a museum nor a wealthy benefactor for a museum, then the specimen is now completely lost to the realm of science. High-profile auctions such as Stan's, Sue's, or what might come of the Montana dueling dinosaur specimen makes these outcomes in which science loses more likely. It continues to drive up the costs of fossil dinosaur specimens and prices museums completely out of their ability to acquire important specimens. This is why we, as a collective society, need the kind of legislation which protects rare and important specimens like Stan, so they can be researched and enjoyed by scientists and the public alike for all time. Museums, whether they're public or private nonprofits, specialize in their field. This means they are the most likely to know exactly how to prepare and store fossils and other significant objects in their collections. Private collectors, such as that anonymous bidder that bought Stan, have no set rules to follow in order to keep their draconic prize intact. They could easily just split it into different pieces and sell off the ones they don't want. There's a high probability the winning bidder won't know how to properly house such a large and important fossil, which could lead to the specimen being damaged, perhaps beyond repair. Stan's bones could end up ground into a paste using traditional medicinal soup. If I wanted to get really hyperbolic, Stan's bones could even end up as the chew toy of some rich elitist dog. The thing is, both the public and researchers would have exactly no idea what the private owner bought it for. Museums, in general, are obliged to allow researchers to examine objects in their collections. Private collectors, yet again, play by no such rules. Dinosaur workers could be charged to examine Stan, or certain individuals could be given certain access above others. If Stan's buyer forever remains anonymous, then the specimen is truly lost, not only to science, but to the world. Due to the litany of issues surrounding these kinds of finds, many paleontologists refuse to study fossils in private collections on ethical grounds. Many scientific publications, like the Journal of Vertebrate Paleontology, Journal of Systematic Paleontology, and Cretaceous Research, outright refuse to publish research which uses privately owned specimens. I'm not sure if I believe that's quite the right way of going about things, but it is a step that could be taken to perhaps reduce the amount of attention privately held specimens get. Does it really matter that Stan was sold? Institutions the world over surely have other Tyrannosauruses, right? What's it to the bigger body of paleontological work if just one specimen disappears in private hands? Well, yes, it actually does matter. Stan is very well preserved. It can shed a ton of light on the collective knowledge of Tyrannosaurus and its world. In general, paleontologists need to have as open access as possible to a given specimen in as perpetual a state as possible. This is so real science can be done. Since science is simply a method by which humans can come to a conclusion, and to prove said conclusion, the specimen's questionable availability is in direct opposition to repeating a given analysis. The tenet of the scientific method is the hypothesis. An hypothesis is only valid if it can be replicated. This protects against mistake, confirmation bias, or fraud. It helps people remain as unclouded as possible since other people can redo a hypothesis to check for authenticity. Selling Stan's fossils to the highest bidder renders any hypothesis about Stan invalid or unable to be reproduced. 
most scientists don't feel comfortable or ethical about using a specimen that may never be able to be used or analyzed by any other paleontologist. This is why most stay far away from privately owned specimens. This is also why private specimens, even those which the owner is fine with lending out, are considered lost and beyond the hands of science. A private owner can be as open and nice about the analyses of their fossil as possible, but if that specimen doesn't find a permanent home in a repository, there's no guarantee it will be accessible to any one person in the future. Just because there are more than one Tyrannosaurus specimens known, doesn't mean any singular specimen is less important. When it comes to big, extinct, charismatic megafauna, like Tyrannosaurus, each new specimen adds another layer of information for the animal, its environment, and its evolution. Furthermore, multiple specimens of the same species or genus allows researchers to avoid mistakes when it comes to identifying anatomical details found in other specimens. The more specimens you have, the less likely one might mistake a trait unique to an individual for a trait unique to the whole species. Imagine, if you will, a world far in the future in which a species of super-intelligent, sentient cephalopod archaeologists rummage through our rubbish and only find the images or remains of Arnold Schwarzenegger or Danny DeVito. These folks are not really representative of the human species as a whole, but rather outliers in strength and small stature. Problems with individual variation also become apparent. A trait found in one specimen of an animal may mistakenly be assumed to be a freak mutation, or just how that individual grew throughout its life. More specimens help to decide whether a trait is individual specific or a trait shared by the entire species. Take Shunosaurus, for example. Shunosaurus was a species of small-sized sauropod, which lived in what is now China. The first specimen found had an odd bony growth at the end of its tail. This lump of bone was first thought to be some weird swollen growth, like an ossified tumor, but was found to be a trait shared by the genus when more were found. Shunosaurus just had tail clubs like the completely unrelated Ankylosaurian dinosaurs. That belongs in a museum! So do you! Despite my tirade about fossils belonging in a museum, not all do. There are some fossils that are rare, and others which are a dime a dozen. Just like with living animals, it's the rare or important ones which deserve more direct attention and protection. I myself have several trilobite, ammonite, belemnoid, and brachiopod fossils in my collection. This isn't a case of rules for thee, not for me. It's simply a case of overabundance. The small freshwater fish, Nitea, is quite possibly the most common vertebrate fossil in the world. I can guarantee you've come across such a fossil before. They are sold for a few dollars at gem and mineral shows across the globe. It's estimated there are around less than 100 Tyrannosaurus specimens currently known. Slightly less than half of them are in private hands. Though I might have a few squid pens, ammonite shells, or trilobite exoskeletons, I most assuredly don't have a Tyrannosaurus skeleton in my dorm room. Psst, see? No Rex. You and I may not have the money or space for such an important find, but celebrities, business conglomerates, and oil tycoons do. Nicolas Cage got in hot water when he won a bid for the skull of close Tyrannosaurus relative Tarbosaurus. Turns out the fossil belongs to the country of Mongolia, which criminalized the export of dinosaur remains in 1924. Nicolas Cage outbid fellow actor Leonardo DiCaprio, which has led to prices for such finds exponentially increasing over time. Auction prices for these rare, scientifically important finds keep going up. Museums are now outclassed from saving specimens from private hands. Even one of the most premier institutions, the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago, couldn't rustle up enough of their own funds to save the most complete Tyrannosaurus specimen ever found, Sue. Thankfully, they got help from McDonald's, Disney, and more. They had to grovel to the companies currently responsible for most of the world's problems in order to save just one specimen. Given the eight-digit price tag Stan's auction ended with, which makes up about 10% of the total value of the Field Museum's property, it becomes extremely unlikely Stan was bought by a museum. One of the longest dinosaurs to ever live, Diplodocus, had a specimen from Wyoming up for auction in 2014. 
It was bought by a Dubai-based developer and set up for permanent display in a Dubai shopping mall. It was then put up for sale again in 2019 and got snagged by an anonymous buyer. Another lost specimen. A currently unknown species of allosaur-like theropod dinosaur skeleton, probably from the Morrison Formation of Wyoming, was set up for auction in the Eiffel Tower in 2018 and sold for $2 million. It's now useless to researchers and will remain a black hole in the study of late Jurassic ecology until a second one is found by people who give a shit. How do these priceless specimens end up in auction houses to begin with? There are many countries in which the private ownership of important fossils is strictly prohibited. The governments and cultures of these countries, like Mongolia, prohibit the private ownership of dinosaur fossils even if they were found on land you own. I'm sure many of us Americans will find this unusual. If you own the land, you should own whatever is on it or in it, right? This is where my bias starts to peek through, folks. The fact that Mongolia considers dinosaur fossils part of their natural and cultural heritage makes a lot more sense to me than every man for himself. A fossil you found on your land has only ornamental use for you, unless you're a scientist looking to study the fossil. I feel we should have more of an emotional, rational, and personal connection to the land we live in. You don't really own the land you own. You are simply allowed to use it by the government. The US government only cares about the land it owns. They've passed a few laws prohibiting the seizure of important fossils on public government-owned land, but not on privately owned land. This is more a problem with the mentality common in the US rather than a problem with actually owning a fossil. Everyone should have enough respect for the land and what comes from it to understand that important fossils belong to all of us. It helps us understand who we are, what we are, where we've come from, and where we are yet to go. Stan's case is kind of muddled. The specimen was found on private land in South Dakota. It was bought, prepared, and cast by the Black Hills Institute. The Black Hills Institute is one of the few privately owned, for-profit, natural history museums in the US. This institution is owned and operated in part by Pete Larson. If that name rings a bell, that's because he and his institution were the ones embroiled in the Tyrannosaur Sioux debacle, which I wince at trying to recap. You know what, I, I won't. You should watch the documentary on it called Dinosaur 13. It may be a little one-sided, but it provides a good gist of the details of the case. Stan's skeleton is easily one of the most reproduced dinosaur skeletons ever. Due to how complete some of its anatomy is, like the skull and arms, its face has become one of the most easily recognizable. If you've been to the Houston Museum of Nature and Science, the Manchester Museum, the New Mexico Museum of Natural History, the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History, the Sternberg Museum of Natural History, and countless dozens more, you've met Stan. As such, High quality casts of Stan have been used in countless research papers over the decades since its discovery. Unfortunately, the Black Hills Institute had to sell the original fossil to raise funds for a legal settlement between itself and one of its shareholders. Go figure. In most of the western states in which fossils from the late Cretaceous, such as Tyrannosaurus, Triceratops, and Edmontosaurus are found, the fossils found on private lands are usually buried beneath ranches. The unsure financial future of many ranchers in these economically depressed areas has taught the ranchers to take full advantage of the extremely individualistic nature of the US government and culture. You'd be an idiot not to take the cash boost from selling fossils to private collectors. In contrast, fossils found in eastern states, or more often found in quarries, who aren't specializing in fossils. More often than not, fossils are not a priority, and simply drilled through. What could possibly be done to mitigate the loss of important finds? Legislation is what's needed to preserve these pieces of our natural history for scientific study. Tax credits could be offered to the ranchers and quarry owners, which allow paleontologists on their private land to collect these fossils before they're destroyed or lost. Legislation could be set up to allow museums a right of first refusal for fossils going to market. That is, museums would be the first ones contacted about new private land finds to make sure they're not super important before they're sold off to the highest bidder. 
A certain level of care and openness could also be required of private owners. I'm sure many paleontologists who are iffy on research done on privately owned specimens would ease up a bit if there was a contract legally binding the private owner to allow permanent access to the fossils and to keep them within their country of origin. All of this can only be achieved by your actions. Make sure you vote for folks that give a shit about who you are and how to preserve what we have. Stan's skeleton will remain on display at Christie's Auction House through October 21st, 2020. I really hope this won't be the last time the public will ever see Stan's real bones. Subscribe to consume some delicious contento. Trash the like button, scrape out a comment, and blast the notification bell just so you're in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching. A very special thanks to my patrons Dinosaur, Natty Cat, Ed Peretz, Steve Bradshaw, Thea Svensson, Jacob Spencer, Dana Manchester, Aphid, Kirby, Antron. If you'd like to support my channel and receive some extra content, pledge to my Patreon at any tier you want. Thank you.